CataractCoach.com. Phaco section and hemi-nucleus extraction. Using a 27 gauge needle to split the nucleus in the anterior chamber. Check it out. So obviously a pretty mature cataract here. Making an incision that's a little bit limbo there. And a little bit of the conjunctiva. Good tunnel length here. You can see it's going to be a wider incision. It's going to be a manual extraction of the nucleus. But instead of doing just a big SICS incision and taking the nucleus out whole, this surgeon is going to split the nucleus into two halves in the anterior chamber and then remo remove each hemi-nucleus out of the incision. So you can see here getting the rex is done. Looks like a nice dense cataract, but not too much intumescent fluid there. But you can do a baby rexus first. So here comes that little baby rexus. And then decompress the capsule bag. This is the double rexus technique, of course. There you go. And remember, this rexus, the small initial rexus, does not have to be any specific uh, size or even shape. But you can see here decompressing, tilt that nucleus a little bit, maybe go in there and wash out a bit. Now here's enlarging the incision. So it looks like maybe making it about, what, four, four and a half millimeters. So a pretty large incision here. Oh, enlarging just a pinch more. So probably, a, I'd say a four and a half millimeter incision. So at this point, the incision's pretty wide. It's certainly going to cause some astigmatic flattening here. And now enlarging that rex is bigger. Now the nucleus has been decompressed. So, okay, just finishing that little loose tag. Now rotating the nucleus. Remember, there can be fluid trapped behind the nucleus, sort of rock it back and forth, rotate it around. That's actually important. You can see there is some intumescent fluid coming out a little bit. So luckily, this capsule bag is not very highly pressurized at this point. And there you go, coming in with a Simcoe cannula just to wash out a little bit more, really making sure that nucleus is decompressed. And now at this point, a little more viscoelastic going inside the eye, and you can enlarge this. So then the double rexus technique, now it's time for the second rexus. So this one obviously has to be more generous. You gotta have at least five millimeters, I'd say even five and a half to six millimeters, because you wanna get this entire nucleus prolapsed out of the capsule bag. So if you have too small of a rexus here, you're not gonna be able to do that. So definitely get this rexus to be a generous one. And a patient like this, with essentially minimal, if any, preoperative vision, Remember, the most critical thing is not necessarily overlap of the optic for 360. Here we go. Here's using a cannula going under that nucleus and kind of just using the two instruments to lift that nucleus up out of the capsule bag. I like this dialing technique. There's the entire nucleus in AC. And then we put some viscoelastic on top of it. You can see there's a vectus underneath it. And so he's making a little score here down the middle with a blunt cannula. And so that uh, lens loop or vectus is underneath it to hold it. And now using a sharp 27 gauge needle, applying pressure to cut, using that needle, the sharp end of it, to the cystitome to cut that nucleus, look at that, into two halves. Very nicely done. Now, sandwich technique to hold it, and you can pull each half out of that incision. There you go, there's one half. You can take out the other half now, and now you've removed that entire nucleus without using a phaco probe through a smaller incision than you would have made if you did the typical SICS procedure. Or the SICS is fantastic too. That's the small incision cataract surgery, which is a manual extraction of an entirely intact nucleus. Here using a Simcoe cannula to wash out that capsule bag, get a little bit of that cortex out, whatever's remaining. The bag can be cleaned up pretty nicely. Just keep in mind you have that large incision here and using that Simcoe through that large incision, you can have a little bit of chamber instability. But caution here is of the order. And now using that caution and using the Simcoe, cleaning up the capsule bag pretty nicely here. So now going around all meridians, the lens, of course, can be put inside the capture bag now. It's a nice technique. So I like this idea of a phaco section to split the nucleus into two halves. And you, know, you may want to try this. In my own surgery center in Beverly Hills, I may try this for a patient on whom I'm planning SICS. Maybe I'll still do a scleral tunnel and still do an SICS incision. But instead of making the SICS incision the full width, as we normally do, the larger version, Maybe I'll make it smaller and try this phaco section in the anterior chamber in order to have a smaller overall incision size. You know, when I do SICS, I tend to put at least a suture in the larger incision. But I think if you did a scleral tunnel and did this size incision, let's say four and a half millimeters, certainly if it was a scleral tunnel, you can get away with no sutures. In this situation, I think the surgeon is using more of a limbal incision and less of a scleral tunnel. And even then, the surgeon is going to be able to use um, just hydration to seal the corneal incision. Again, there will be some astigmatic flattening of this meridian, but it looks like the surgeon's operating at the um, 
180 degree meridian, so against the rule. And typically, these elderly cataract patients tend to have astigmatism against the rule. So perhaps this incision could even be helpful for those patients. Neat idea. I want you to keep in mind this technique if you ever have a case where it's appropriate. And leave a comment below. Have you ever tried this phaco section technique? I think it's a neat idea. And I have not tried it just yet, but I'm certainly going to keep it in my toolbox for future use. Please leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. And I want to remind you, we have a resident surgical video competition coming up with cash prizes. Details are here on the screen. If you go to the website, cataractcoach.com, yes, you're going to have to leave YouTube for a moment. Go to cataractcoach.com, click on the video from today. You'll see the full directions. You'll see the hot link so you can have directions as to where to upload your video. Only one video per surgeon, and you can be from anywhere around the world. We're going to have a deadline of June 1 to submit your video, and then on June 15th will be the live judging, and contest winners will be announced. I hope you win. If you're the grand prize winner, I'll write the check to you myself. Check it out.